good morning everyone so recall that in the last class we have discussed that x naught is a regular singular point for the differential equation y double dash plus p of x y dash plus q of x y is equal to 0 if x p x and x square q x are analytic at x naught yes and in that case if x naught is a regular singular point then our power series solution which is known as the Frobenius series solution looks like summation a n x minus x naught raised to the power n plus r. Here I am assuming x naught is equal to 0 that is why I wrote a n x raised to the power n plus r. Now in case of the ordinary point there was no r but here since there is an r so to find the value of r we need to compute the initial equation which we have seen in the last class. So to compute the initial equation we put this solution into the given differential equation then equate the coefficient of lowest degree term to 0 that gives a quadratic equation in R. <coughs> These are the roots of the initial and then the roots of the initial equation gives us the required Frobenius solution. Now based on the roots there are the four cases which we are going to discuss. The first case is roots of initial equation do not differ by an integer. What does it mean? So if you find the roots of the initial equation you take their difference then their difference if it is not an integer then there always exists two linearly independent Frobenius series solution. Yes. So let us see an exercise. 2x square y double dash plus x y dash minus x plus 1 y is equal to 0. So here p of x is 1 by 2x and q of x is minus x plus 1. So clearly x p of x and x square q of x are analytic at x is equal to 0. So here we are always looking about x is equal to 0. So since they are analytic at x is equal to 0 implies x is equal to 0 is a regular singular point. You can see that p and q are not analytic at x equal to 0 that is why x is equal to 0 is not an ordinary point. So it is a reg regular singular point implies your Frobenius series solution would look like a n x raised to the power n plus r. Yes, if I call it equation 1 and this is equation 2. So putting 2 in 1. So the first term is 2x square y double dash. So 2 summation n plus r n plus r minus 1 x raised to the power n plus r minus 2 but multiplied by x square so it becomes n plus r. Then summation it is x y dash so n plus r and x raised to the power n plus r minus 1 a n is there of course but again multiplied by x so therefore it becomes x raised to the power n plus r minus x y dash so a n x raised to the power n plus r plus 1 and minus y so a n x raised to the power n plus r everywhere you can write n starting or n you can say greater than equal to 0. Yes. Now the first step is to find the initial equation and once I have the initial equation then we will find the general recurrence relation. So the lowest degree term is x raised to the power r because n is starting from 0. So we cannot have x raised to the power r minus 1. So equating coefficient of x raised to the power r to 0 we have so from the first term you can see that I am getting 2 and x raised to power means n should be 0 so a naught r r minus 1 plus from the next one I will get a naught r from the third there is no coefficient of x raised to the power r and from the last I will get a naught. Again one important thing is that when I write down this solution so I always have to write that a naught is not equal to 0. This is very very important. 
so now since a naught is not equal to 0 I will get 2r square minus 2r plus r minus 1 is equal to 0 that gives you r is equal to 1 and minus r so now if you see the difference of the root is not an integer so roots do not differ by an integer implies there exist two linearly independent Frobenius solution yes so now I need the general term so from here either I equate the coefficient of x raised to the power n plus r or x raised to the power n plus r plus 1 to 0 if you see if I choose x raised to the power n plus r then there are three terms where the coefficient is directly visible in this case it is n plus r plus 1 so coefficient of x raised to the power n plus r plus 1 is a n which means n plus r is a n minus 1 so now in 2 or you can call it 3 also so in 3 equating coefficient of x raised to the power n plus r to 0 so from the first term I will get 2 a n n plus r n plus r minus 1 then from the second term a n n plus r plus a n n plus r from the third term it is minus a n minus 1 and then minus a n is equal to g so I can take a n minus 1 on that side so a n in the bracket I have 2 n plus r square minus n plus r minus 1 a n is equal to a n minus 1 provided n is greater than equal to 1 if you further simplify it then it becomes a n minus 1 by 2 n plus simply factorize it keeping n plus r as a variable and this is my required reference relation yes if I substitute some of the values a1 is equal to a naught by 2 2r plus 3 a2 is equal to a1 by r plus 1 and 2r plus 5 which is a naught by r r plus 1 2r plus 3 or 2r plus 5 or what you can do is that you can compute the coefficient separately for the values of the r yes so your r is 1 and minus half so you can say that for r is equal to 1 a n is a n minus 1 and 2 n plus 3 and n and for r is equal to minus half a n is a n minus 1 so it's minus half so it becomes 2n and n minus 3 by 2 yes so now you can compute the different coefficient because each value of r gives you a required Frobenius solution so for r is equal to 1 a1 is a0 and you substitute n is equal to 1 so it becomes 5 similarly a2 is a1 by you substitute n is equal to 2 so 4 plus 3 7 and 2 that is a naught by 2 5 7 similarly a3 is a2 by 9 3 which is a naught by 2 3 5 7 and 9 similarly in this case if you compute a1 it becomes a0 and n is equal to 1 so 2 and minus half which is minus a0 your a2 is a1 and n is equal to 2 so 4 and half which is a1 by 2 which is minus a0 by 2 and so on. so it means the first Frobenius solution or this 
solution looks like x raised to the power r a naught plus a one x plus a two x square plus so on. So now if you substitute the value, so for r is equal to one, y of x is x raised to the power one, and you take a naught common, so it becomes one plus a one x. So a one is one by five. Plus a two x square a two is two dot five dot seven and so on. Similarly, for r is equal to minus half, your y two x is a naught x raised to the power minus half x raised to the power r. Then a naught plus a one x a one is minus so minus x minus x square by two. So I suggest you to compute three four terms. and leave the answer in this form because it is not possible to identify the general term yes so this is the case one which we have discussed where you always get the two frobenius solution the case two is quite simple which says that equal roots so equal roots of initial equation now if roots are equal it means you get only one frobenius series solution so in this case there exists only one frobenius solution yes it means that there does not exist the second frobenius solution but it does not means that the given differential equation does not have two solutions of course it has two solutions but using this method we can compute only one solution this is very very important to remember so now let's try a question x square y double dash minus 3x y dash plus 4x plus 4y is equal to g yes so again the process would remain same you can observe here is that x is is equal to 0 is a regular singular point because x px and x square qx are analytic at x equal to 0 and that's why your solution would be an x raised to the power n plus r provided a naught is not equal to 0 if you substitute y into the given equation it becomes summation n plus r n plus r minus one x raised to the power n plus r minus three n plus r x raised to the power n plus r then plus four x so four a n x raised to the power n plus r plus one and the last is four a n x raised to the power n plus r yes so four terms we are getting now the lowest degree term is again x raised to the power r so equating coefficient of x raised to the power r to g yes So now let's see what we are getting. From the first term, we are getting a naught r r minus one minus three. In all of them, a n is missing. So minus three a naught r. Third one does not have the coefficient of x raised to the power r, and the fourth one has. So plus four a naught. Now a naught is not equal to zero. implies it becomes r square minus 4r plus 4 is equal to 0 that gives you equal roots so equal roots means there exists only one frobenius series solution for r is equal to 2 now again we will equate the coefficient of x raised to power n plus r to 0 so equating coefficient of x raised to the power n plus r to 0 you will get a n the first term is n plus r n plus r minus 1 the second term is minus 3 a n n plus r so minus 3 a n n plus r Fourth term is four a n minus one. 
and the fifth term is 4 a n so if you simplify it it becomes a n is equal to minus 4 a n minus 1 and n plus r minus 2 whole square provided n is greater than equal to 1 yes now since there is only one value of r so for r is equal to 2 your a n becomes minus 4 a n minus 1 and divided by n square so now rest of the things are very easy to compute so a1 is minus 4 a naught a2 is 4 a naught and so on and that's why y of x is a naught then x raised to the power r which is x square then 1 minus a1 1 plus a1 x plus a2 x square so, so very easy to solve it yes so in the coming class we have to see two more cases and we need to see how many probability series solution exist in those cases thank you very much